Hello, my name is Jack Dulles, Director of Training at Tulsa Welding School, and today we're going to go over a 3G 6010 root 7018 filling cap. Okay, and we're going to run it on 3 8 plate. I'm going to run it on DC positive. I'm going to run my route probably somewhere between 75 and 80. I like to personally, I like to have a 1 8 land with a 1 8 gap on uh, my plates. Okay, I've got a plate here, and so what I'm going to do is uh, I've cleaned it all up on the outside both sides okay and i want to talk about the land at people asking what's land what is it explain okay so when you when you have a bevel you get it to a knife edge okay well i've taken that knife edge and i put it flat and i have ground i take my grinder and i've ran it across here and basically made a flat spot all the way across the plate as you can see here and what i want it to be is i want it to be a 1 8 inch wide so if you take your rod this is a 1 8 60 10 and you set it on there you want it to be as wide as your rod okay it's okay to have a little extra because we can turn the heat up but when, if you don't have enough a lot of times you'll have big keyholes so you really want to watch out for that make sure that you have the proper fit up the proper land the proper gap uh, and they'll make running 60 10 a lot easier but if you cut corners and you don't take your time and prep and clean and fit up all the right ways you're only going to have problems you're going to have more issues you're going to get frustrated so like i say please take the time make sure that you clean the metal put the proper size land on you get the proper gap so you can run this the right way so i've went ahead and tacked one up i've already cleaned it and prepped it as you can tell it's all clean on the outsides clean on the insides i've got my 1 8 land i've got my 1 8 gap in here i've tacked it all up and so i want to take this time and show you run a nice 60 10 root vertical and then we'll come back and run 7018 fill and cap uh, okay so if you're ready we'll get started okay so we got our plate all tacked up once again just to recover our bases we've got a 1 8 land 1 8 gap we're running a 1 8 60 10 rod we're running it on dc positive we're also running i recommend between 75 and 80 that's you know the give and take in there uh, depends on what your landing gap is uh, but like i said we're going to run in the vertical position and uh hopefully we can run some nice clean passes in here so here we go When you fire up, just get it in there nice and tight. You want to keep that nice and tight rod in there the whole time. And you can hear it. You can see it burning through the back. You want all that fire going out the back. Just nice and smooth. Take your time. It's not about rushing. It's not a race. As you can see, the fire is going out the back. Keep all the fire going out the back. Keep your rod in there nice and tight. Make sure you don't favor one side or the other. A lot of times when, when people are running this, they want to favor a side. Just keep it right in the middle. Take your time. Make sure it's got nice keels burning to both sides of the plate. Stop there, give us a new rod, okay? If you're, when you're gonna make a tie-in, you'd like to take this time and you'll grind this down, you'll make a nice little boat ramp on there. Uh, I'll come back and do a tie-in for you at another time, but like I said, we're just gonna keep going here so you can see it. You can hear the roar of it just ripping out the back. You can see I'm just taking it nice and smooth, nice and steady, keeping my rod up in there. If it starts to wander off to one side, just change your angle, get it back even again, get it going right down the middle. When you step up, make sure you always come back down and touch that puddle. You got to come back and get that puddle every time.
and stop there. Okay, one more rod to go. We'll keep it going. All right, here we go. Let's finish this up. You can see I'm keeping that rod in there tight. I got a little bit of sparks coming out on the inside, but most of them are all going out the back. You can see the fire and the flames and everything going out the back. That's how you want it. You can hear that ripping sound. Let me just stop here. Got a little spot up there, no big deal. Come back and close that up at another time. All right, so we got a nice 6010 root in there. You can see it's all nice and flush, keeping it in there nice and smooth. Uh, you know, a couple of little spots there where we're gonna go back and grind it, clean it up a little bit. So I'm gonna get my grinder, clean up all the little uh, slag on the outside, get my couple little high spots down. I'm gonna grind it down and then I'll come back and we'll run a 7018 fill and cap, okay? So just one second while I grind this down. Okay, so we've taken it, we've went ahead and ground this all down. I've taken a, a, a quarter inch grinding disc, came back, and just kind of cleaned it all up a little bit, got my high spots down, got all the slag out and make it nice and shiny. You don't have to grind it down to where it's like perfectly clean in there. Uh, you know, if you get it down too thin, you got a good chance of popping a hole when you run your fill and cap. Okay, so what we've done after we got our root in there and ground it all down, now I've switched over to a 332-7018 rod. Okay, a 332-7018 rod, we're still running on DC positive. And now I've changed my amperage as well. I run a 332-7018 around 85 amps. Uh, I would say anywhere between 80 and 90 is, is, is recommended, but you can run it whatever you want, but I usually run mine between 80 and 90 with a 332-7018. So 332-7018, around 85. Once again, on this one, I know I ran you some stringer beads on other ones. This one, I'm gonna show you a weave, okay? I'm gonna run a little weave technique. Um, I'm gonna come in, basically just gonna be burning into the toe lines of my 6010, your toe lines in here, and just burn it in nice and side, nice and even. Going up just a little weave technique, okay? Not much, just trying to stay right into the groove. My goal here is to burn right into my 6010. Then I'll come back and I'll run another fill pass and then we'll put a cap pass on it, okay? All righty, here we go. Okay, mark our slag off here. Okay. We're gonna make a tie-in. I've talked about this before. It's called a J technique. It's one of the tie-ins I recommend running. So I'm gonna fire up. Okay, let me back this up so you can see. I'm gonna fire up. I'm gonna come down, I'm gonna draw a little J right here in the circle. Then I'm gonna go right back into my little weave pattern, moving right up the plate. Okay, so keep it nice and tight. J technique, here we go.
Got just a little bit of slag hiding on my side over there. It's okay. okay. Nice and smooth. Got a nice little bead in there. Got a little bit of slag hiding just right here. Nothing major, just a little tiny line of it. We'll get it out. So now we're gonna come in, we're gonna run some more fill pass. As I run this pass, as I run this pass here, I'm still staying inside the groove, okay? I'm not going outside my groove. I'm gonna keep it inside, side to side. I'm watching my puddle fill up and come up on the edges of the bevels, but not overrunning the bevels. You don't wanna run the bevels. Just wanna keep it inside, okay? Like I say, this is just our fill pass, and we wanna just keep it on the inside. Do not let your puddle go over the outside of the beveled edges, all right? Here we go. There, clean our metal. Keeping it going here, we'll keep it going. Got some more fill to go, here we go. Oh, well, sometimes that just happens, folks, it does. I'd like to say I don't, I'd like to say I never mess up, but it happens. You clean that little spot off where I stuck it. Okay, let's try this again.
Okay, not too bad, looking pretty good. So now we are going to put our cap on, okay? And when you run your cap, you want to make sure that you still, once again, don't take your rod outside your beveled edge, okay? We're keeping it inside the groove, inside the groove. And all we're going to do is we're going to pause just slightly as we move across, or pause on the sides as we move across, pause here, move across, pause there, move across, pause here, back and forth, a little weed pattern. But you got to watch it as you pause, you want to make sure that the puddle fills up and it overruns the beveled edge. Once it overfills and overruns, then you go to the other side, pause, once it fills up, then you move up to the other side, and back and forth, back and forth. You don't want to go outside your groove. If you get outside the groove over here and you start welding, you're going to get it wider, you're going to get it sloppier. The wider you go, just the more chances for error. So try to keep it small, try to keep it tight, keep a nice tight arc length. Okay, here we go. Got a nice little cap going here. Hey, okay, looks pretty good. Not too bad in there. We'll keep this going. Okay. Make your tie-in, same thing as you make your tie-in. Once again, strike up ahead, come down, make a J technique, keep on going. And okay, here we go. Yeah, I missed it just a little bit right here. You can see it right here. I kind of should have made a little more of a loop right there. So that's where you can see that tie-in. I should have just, just drew the J a little bit better. And so I got a little, little spot there you can see, but nothing major. Still be okay. All right, let's finish this cap. Then I'll clean it all up and show you the backside. Okay, here we go.
I'm gonna stop there. I know the plate's already kind of opened up there, so just leave it alone. So, see the back side here? I'm gonna clean it off. I'll show you the back side too. Okay, so we just completed our weld here. This was a 3G on 3 8 plate with a 6010 root, 1 8 land, 1 8 gap. Uh, like I said, I ran my 6010 root on uh, um, 75 to 80 on the, with the 6010, and then the fill in cap with the 332 7, uh, 7018, I ran that on 85 amps. So here is our fill in cap, and I'll break this off here for you, give you an opportunity to see my uh, root in there okay yes I know there was a little tie in there but if you watch the video I didn't actually stop and grind that down I'll do that on another video to show you how to make some nice clean tie-ins I did make another tie-in up here and you can see it was fine uh, I just should have just ground it down to be honest with you but here you go nice clean root everything looks good in there nice and solid I say 3g 7018 6010 7018 filling cap on 3 8 plate. I hope you learned something today. I hope you liked the video. If you have comments or questions, please reach out to Tulsa Welding School. We'll be glad to talk to you and help you out. Thank you for watching the video today. We'll see you next time. Thank you for watching our video today. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned something today. If you would like to get some more tips and tricks and become a better welder, then subscribe to our channel. And if you would like to learn even more right now, then click on our link. Thank you and we'll see you next time.